Well, our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is with us as we talk more about the COVID-19 virus. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about sports since I follow sports yes. so closely. Yes. Uh, Santa Clara County told the San Jose Sharks that they can't play hockey in the Shark Tank and that they're going to go along with that. That's going to, you know, they, they just don't feel safe to get all those people together. The governor of Ohio is yeah. saying they, they people shouldn't go to indoor sporting events unless their parents that are at state tournaments yeah. and things like that. Uh, in Massachusetts, they postponed the Ivy League post yes. postseason basketball for men and women. Would you be going? to a basketball or, or a hockey game right now? Not at this time. And I think what's really changed this week is there's been a, a dramatic and palpable shift from the CDC in going from individual-based containment measures such as hand washing, staying at home if you're sick, to community-based measures such as canceling large sporting events, canceling concerts, canceling conferences, all because we're realizing that the scope of the virus is such that at this point, the only way to really keep it at bay is for all of us as a community to do these things. Let me just follow up real quick on that because yeah. it sounds like that might make people jumpy or we talk about panicking and thinking, you're saying this is not for a long time. Theoretically, this works if we do it well in a short order. No, and you're exactly right, Tom. It does induce that sense of panic, but I would say the opposite. We're actually learning lessons from China and South Korea where they implemented these measures and look, their cases have now started to go down. So this actually to me gives me hope that we do have some level of control as a community over this virus, that changes that we make can affect the behavior of the virus and help to control it. So social distancing means like if you're going to a family member's home and maybe families are gathering, it's a small group, you'd say, OK. It, but yeah. if you were going to a party or a concert, don't go. Yeah, so, so uh, another good question. So social distancing generally means maintaining uh, six feet or more of contact from other people and trying to avoid large crowded groups where the risk of respiratory secretions could be greater because you're exposed to more people. So yes, six small, okay. small family gatherings are, are certainly Are we six okay. feet apart? We are. Okay, we are. Just so like we're socially distanced. Okay. No <laughs> touching, right? No touching. Well, aren't you and, too perfect? <laughs> <laughs> and just for the short term, like you said, so this is not going to be our life forever and ever, but we're fighting a common enemy here, and we've all got to band together to really help make this an effective measure. And Dr. Fauci was just on a press conference a few minutes ago where he said, even if you have zero cases of, of COVID-19 virus in your community, you need to start doing some of these behaviors because that's exactly how we're going to prevent the spread of this thing. And we're talking about short term, but the short term time falls on spring break. And you were talking about travel, and I think we all kind of had a visceral reaction mm -hmm. to that. But you're saying do not get on a plane right now. Do not. And I had travel plans myself in a few weeks and I've canceled them and I think that's the right thing to do right now because the situation is so rapidly evolving and remember the risk to each individual is very low particularly the healthy ones but one of the reasons we're doing this is to protect the people in our community the elderly mm -hmm. the immunocompromised who will get this virus through us because we will run around the country collecting the virus and not being very symptomatic and passing it on to them. We turn to you for medicine and science, but we're also talking a lot about social and mm -hmm. cultural ideals here for mm -hmm. people and, and that idea that you know we, we can and can't do the things we want to do or, or we do feel panicked or we don't feel panicked. Right. Uh, this is tricky for a lot of people right now. It is very tricky and, and one of the uh, the things is the, is the virus itself. Of course, it has, you know, its symptoms. But one of the things the virus does is it wreaks havoc in our society in a mental fashion. And that's the part we have a control over. And so we can't control, you know, how it spreads and what the infectiousness of the virus is, but how it makes us react and how it makes us feel, we do have control over. And I would turn this around. And, and I think there's several silver linings to this virus. It's made us come together as a community. It's made us much more aware of how much we touch our face, how clean we need to be, how much we have to wash our hands. And it's made us realize that we're all kind of in this together and there are things bigger than us. But don't wait for concert promoters or sports teams or right. airlines to make decisions for you. You control it. This is, you, you do have a say so in how you do and how you help the community go through this. Absolutely, and sometimes we feel obligated to wait because we feel we'll get our money back or something like that. But what's coming down the horizon is more and more of these cancellations. And as you've already seen, the impact on our universities, our sporting events, our concerts, our way of life has been so dramatic. In the next few weeks, we're just gonna see more of that. Yeah. All right, Pyle, thanks very much. Thank of course, you. we'll be seeing more of you. You're the busiest person <laughs> in the nation. Uh, Thank you, thank goodness you're here. <laughs>